Thank you for attending today's webinar on the complete CPS product portfolio for CMI applications. I'm Kelly Pickerel, editor with Solar Power World. And before we get started, I want to go over just a few things. This webinar will be sent to all registrants so you can view it again. Slides are available to view at any time in the resource widget at the bottom of your screen. And you can submit any questions related to today's webinar in the Q&A widget. We will try to answer these during the webcast. But if we do not get to your question, our presenters may reach out to you afterwards. And finally, if you are watching this on demand, you can still use all of these features. So let's get started with today's webinar on the complete CPS product por portfolio for CNI applications. Today's speakers are Peter Xiong, who is Director of Product, and Anton Patton, who is Applications Engineer, both with CPS. And today, we'll discuss the various product offerings from CPS for the commercial market. So now, I'd like to turn things over to Anton. All right. Thank you, Kelly, and thank you, everyone, for joining our webinar today. Um, so, I think it's slide loaded. Um, So, so in today's webinar, we're going to start by discussing some of the many different applications and design considerations for commercial and industrial solar PV projects, which have been key drivers in, in how CPS America thinks about and develops new products and features to best support our customers' needs. Specifically, we'll go over rooftop and carport systems, as well as other design considerations applicable to the CNI market. Um, then we'll go over the products and solutions that CPS offers to support the wide range of CNI applications, as well as the service and technical support um, that CPS provides our customers. And like Kelly said, there there should be some time at the end of the the webinar to uh, answer any questions you may have. All right, so we'll start by looking at rooftop PV applications, and these can include office buildings, schools, hospitals, shopping centers, or other types of commercial or, or industrial buildings. And in these different applications, there are several considerations that designers, installers, and system operators should keep in mind. One key consideration in rooftop PV system design is possible space constraints at the site that may require arrays to be broken up in different areas due to equipment on the roof or possibly having modules on separate rooftops depending on how the building is laid out. And when there, there are space constraints for the PV arrays, or, or maybe you do have smaller arrays spread out, it's often advantageous to have a range of different solar inverter sizes that allow flexibility in designs. Uh, an example of this would be using several 25 kilowatt or 36 kilowatt inverters for, for the different smaller arrays instead of trying to connect all the arrays of a system and run the cable long distances to one large inverter like a 100 kilowatt or, or 150 kilowatt. Other things to consider are the temperatures and environments that the inverters and electrical equipment will be operating in. Many times the inverters are installed on the roof and are located in the direct sunlight throughout their lifetime. If there are not shaded or partially shaded locations. In these, in these cases, using shade covers, like the covers that you can see in the uh, center fo photo here on the tilt-mounted inverters, could maximize the system performance and possibly extend the life of the inverters depending on the site and design. And systems installed on buildings are also now required to have rapid shutdown, which we'll go into later in this webinar. And the, the details of the rapid shutdown requirements do vary depending on the National Electric Code 
addition that's in effect at the project location. Additional rooftop uh, system considerations include ease of installation of the components. And to be efficient with labor and, and project schedules, it's beneficial to have equipment that's simple and quick to install. One example is our new 25 kilowatt inverter, which is light and compact enough for one person to lift. And if mounting the inverters on the roof, you'll, you'll want to use simple cost-effective mounting solutions that allow the inverters to be easily installed on rooftops. And serviceability throughout the life of the products is also a key consideration. And CPS has done a lot of design work in this area, such as our separable wire box design that allows quick inverter replacements, as well as designing our inverters to be lightweight so that only one or two technicians are needed to lift it. Roof access is another thing to keep in mind and be aware of for rooftop systems. Since you need to get the equipment up on the roof, if you have small inverters that you can easily bring up through a roof hatch, if that's available, can, can be much simpler and a lot more cost effective than needing to rent a scissor lift every time replacements or, or maintenance is needed. Also, once on the roof, it's obviously much easier to carry an inverter that's less than 50 pounds um, than it is to carry uh, a large heavy inverter that's close to 200 pounds. And with carport systems, since the inverters are typically installed on the posts of the carport structures, there may be concerns since they're out in the open with, with tampering or someone coming up and say turning off one of the, the inverter disconnect switches. If there are tampering concerns, uh, CPS offers lockable disconnect covers that protect the inverter switches uh, from any tampering. Also, since parking lots and parking structures vary widely in size and layout, having a range of different inverter sizes is useful to be able to optimize the systems for the amount of modules in each carport array. Serviceability like rooftop systems is also important with carport systems. So things like lightweight inverters and separate wire boxes where DC and AC connections don't need to be touched when replacing the inverter are definitely valuable features to, to have for these applications. Other considerations for C and I systems include different service voltages at the points of interconnection. Most C and I projects in the U.S. have 480 volt AC interconnections, but there are systems that may need to interconnect to a 208 volt service. And as 208 volt systems are a smaller portion of the market, there are not many inverter solutions available that, that output 208 volts. And many designers today will use a step-down transformer to allow 480 volt inverters to be interconnected to 208 volt services, but CPS is also releasing a new 25 kilowatt inverter that has a 208 volt output designed specifically for these types of systems. Other things are CNI systems may need to comply with different codes and requirements depending on the local jurisdiction or utility. Some examples are the California Rule 21 smart inverter requirements or the different NEC additions as well as possible additional requirements from the utilities such as a specific power factor needed for, for grid support. It's also important when specking equipment and designing systems um, to ensure that the interoperability of the equipment and, and making sure the products used together, such as module level rapid shutdown devices and string inverters have 
been tested and certified together as a system. So basically making sure all components are, are compatible and safe when used together. It's also important to make sure the TV connectors on the modules and the connectors on the other equipment and cables can be mated together and there aren't any compatibility concerns. One last thing I'll mention is that some designers will want to combine the DC strings between the modules and the inverters to either reduce the number of DC home runs or use products like rapid shutdown combiners or, or Y branch cables. And CPS does offer uh, fuse bypass terminal and Y cone terminal block accessory kits to allow combined strings to be connected directly to our inverter bo wire boxes for these types of, of specific applications. And all right, so, so I've gone over several different applications and, and challenges that, that may come up when designing and installing PV systems. And now I'll pass it to Peter, our director of products, who will describe the products and, and solutions available to meet the needs of these CNI applications. Yeah, thanks, Anton. Um, Thanks for the uh, thorough explanation of what the current challenges and situation is for the CNI uh, uh, sector of our industry. Um, so, like Anton said, we uh, when CPS, you know, plan and, and our products uh, are designed to overcome all these uh, challenges and concerns that uh, uh, we are currently facing in the industry. So. In the following uh, uh, slide decks, we will go over our new product, which is the 25 kilowatt inverter, both 480 volt and uh, 208 volt. And uh, of course, our uh, flagship product, T60 kilowatt inverters, as well as our uh, solution that geared towards the uh, rapid shutdown requirement, and also our monitoring thing, uh, uh, monitoring product, which is the uh, flag scale. Now, uh, this is the uh, current product offering of our uh, uh, product portfolios. So we used to offer 23 and 28 kilowatt. We do still have some of these uh, equipment in our stock, but we plan on using them for, um, for our uh, IMA. Uh, and so we do not uh, really foresee any high demand for these two products. So we kind of, uh, we are, we are um, end of lifing, uh, most of these two platforms. Um, so I encourage customers to not uh, have new design with these two products. Um, so I'm sure uh, we can replace these two with our current product offering portfolio, anywhere from 25 to uh, 15 to 60s, right? So 25, 36, 50, 60 kilowatt inverters. Uh, all of these are equipped with uh, rapid shutdown integrated wire box loop go much, much deeper in the later slides, except for the 36s, which uh, doesn't have the integrated uh, rapid shutdown, but it does have the option to go uh, have an external device uh, with uh, the module level rapid shutdown. Um, and of course, our new product, which is not currently currently available, it will be available uh, pretty soon, Q3 of 2020, is our 208 volt output 25 kilowatt inverter. Uh, we'll go into that much more deeper in the later slides. Um, so I want to start with our uh, CPS integrated ISD wire boxes. So the challenges, uh, like Anton mentioned earlier, is the new requirement kind of catches everyone off guard. So uh, CPS attempt to uh, bring long-term values to our customer and save uh, our customer money on both uh, the initial construction installation as well as long-term OMM. So we, we went to the next step and integrate all the necessary parts, the power supplies and transmitters and POC components into our wire boxes. So there are no additional requirements that uh, our customers need to mount or install in the field. Um, so, so the RSD wire boxes are factory integrated with POC transmitters, our supply and core. Core is the uh, the uh, sensor that measures the current uh, 
of input PV current. And uh, I mean, CPS aim to design everything plug and play, so there's no extra field wiring necessary to connect the RSC equipment. And also, what we did is we, jumping from 2014 to 2017, RSD uh, requirements, uh, and, and or, or including the updates of the NEC. We also eliminate half the amount of visas, so there are more working spaces for installers to, to wire, to do, to perform wiring and connections. Um, so that's something else we, we did with the uh, RSD integrated wire box. And there are currently three options we offer uh, for our product, and we'll go into each one of them. Uh, we'll mention something about the pros and cons, but we currently offer three different options for for uh, rapid shutdown, and they are Tygo, APS, and MEP. Uh, each of them have their uh, own uh, pros and cons, of course. Um, so this is our 25 kilowatt, 480 volt output inverter that this is our newest uh, product. Uh, it is available since the end of last year. Uh, it just came up. It just came out of market. Uh, I think we, we, we uh, showcased it uh, at SPI last year. Um, so this is an interesting product because instead of growing bigger, we are growing smaller. And the choice is based on uh, is is based on a lot of the customers' feedback on uh, on that. Yes. So very, very lightweight, very compact. Uh, it is uh, easier for insulation because it's much, much smaller. And uh, of course, they will come. We also offer a racking solution to come with this product, which I'll mention uh, later in my slides. And uh, for this part, there's no need for heavy equipment. You don't need a crane or lifting devices. All you need is a couple guys and a couple screwdrivers. So uh, just like all of our products, it does come with separable wire box design. Uh, so uh, with uh, PDISS uh, compliant um, for refuge shutdown, so it's NEC 2017 compliant. And um, we have all three options available. Um, it, is, it does comply with all the current uh, certifications uh, in the main land USA. Uh, HECO will be coming soon, um, so, maybe, so HECO is not available at this point, but it will be available very soon. Uh, so we do plan on having HECO certification, and also uh, we do plan on integrating this inverter with 20 amp fusing. So currently it is uh, available at 15 amps, but it will be available by, with uh, 20 amp fusing uh, very fast. So that is our 25 kilowatt. And coming soon, that is our uh, 208 volt output, again, 25 kilowatt inverter. So uh, last year um, and beginning of this year, we hear uh, overwhelming demand on uh, the customer side, which has 208 and action voltage, and people do not want to use the uh, dry type transformer because that's one extra equipment you have to install, one extra failure point, and one extra equipment you have to maintain. So people really want to avoid it, and there are very limited options on the market for two a volt interconnection uh, equipment. So uh, we decided to go ahead and uh, uh, create a product that can can uh, fit in this uh, project scenario for our customers. So we basically modified our 5060 uh, uh, kilowatt inverter, and then uh, had modified the uh, uh, AC output and DC a little bit. So they they'll be easier for the customers to to do their installation and then and then connect at the 208 volt. Uh, so the AC output is 25 kilowatt and uh, input is 1,000 volt DC. It will have integrated RSD as our 5060 has, and um, this product is uh, accepting pre-orders right now. We will be shipping probably. Uh, Q, end of Q3, beginning of Q4 this year, but we can start to uh, accept pre-orders, and uh, and uh, we expect this uh, this to 
to be uh, very popular in the uh, two label international sector of this market. So, coming to our flagship product, uh, we call it our workhorse, which is our 1560, is very popular. Um, we probably shipped uh, over 4,000 units of this uh, devices uh, last year. Um, so it does comply with all the current uh, current requirement in the mainland USA. Um, again, we're expecting to have HECO very soon. So it does have verification for PGRSS with all three um, options we have. It's NEC 2017 compliant, um, and U21, U1741 SA compliant. Uh, it does have both AC and DC disconnect. Uh, the input PV string limit is 15 strings, and uh, it does operate with three MPPTs. Um, like I mentioned before, uh, we are integrating the thesis into the uh, inverter currently with 15 amps. Uh, 20 amps thesis will be available by Q3, so we're shifting all the 15 amps to 20 amps uh, by the uh, middle end of Q3 um, this year. So it will come with 20 amp thesis pretty soon. And uh, we do expect to have a HECO certification Q4 2020, so we can start installing these in Hawaii. And uh, right now, we did a AC terminal modification based on customer feedback, and they are uh, uh, available for uh, to buy up to 350 kcml uh, cable. Um, so that's the latest justification. So new parts should be shipping uh, soon, probably in a couple of months. So uh, there are the modifications we made based on the customer's feedback. Um, of course, we still have the uh, other uh, legacy product and the uh, uh, old product available for 1,000 volts. That's at 23, 28, and 36 kilowatt inverters. Like I mentioned before, uh, we really are in the process of end of our 23 and 28 kilowatt uh, machines. So uh, we encourage customers to, uh, um, when, when you are designing a smaller carport or smaller rooftop, use our 25 kilowatt instead of uh, our uh, 23 or 28 kilowatts. So that's that's uh, I just want to mention that. Um, and it is still available for sale. Uh, and our and we'll, we'll get into that much uh, deeper with the uh, uh, CPS uh, racking solution. So so 23, 28, and 36 are also available uh, for our new racking solution. So our new racks. Our new racks works with, uh, with the 36, 28, and 23 kilowatt inverters. Um, we call these new racks the legs, by the way, so we're going to mention that a little later. So it does comply. Most of them uh, comply with the uh, current um, certifications. Um, so, and the highest DC AC ratio is 1.5. The CPS record shutdown solution uh, we, we mentioned earlier, in addition to that, we also have a very small quantity of uh, modules available. Um, they, they, still, they are still in stock. Um, so in addition to the uh, Wirebox integrated uh, RSD solution, CPS also aims to, because we have a uh, sister company that also produces modules, um, we did uh, integrate uh, some of the uh, Tidal uh, 4F devices into our wire boxes, and we call these modules the uh, Astro CPS Astro Smart modules. We don't have many of them left, so we'll be on a first come first serve basis. Uh, it is very hard to to get availability of the modules, so we are running out of them, but they are still currently available. Um, so we do have a uh, junction box integrated. Um, uh, with the uh, Tygo receiver and the transmitter is including Wirelox, so this is a very clean solution. There are no other devices between the inverter and module for the Astro Smart. But unfortunately, it's, uh, it's a limited supply right now. Um, we also have the standard modules, that's Astro Halo. We have some of those left, and those do have we do have to install them with uh, a reference on the device, uh, either Tygo or others. 
Um, so, so we do have also those modules options for our customers. Uh, but like I said, they are limited in uh, quantity and availability. So um, want to go a little deeper on the rapid shutdown options. So there are uh, currently CPS 25 kilowatt and 56 kilowatt are certified with uh, four different uh, RSD uh, receivers. So they are Tygo TS4 AF and Tygo TS4 A2F and APS uh, TLC A and MEP PG 4. So they all have certification uh, with uh, the CPS 25 and 56 3 kilowatt inverters. Um, the Tygo and ATS devices uh, act very similarly. Uh, they are very plain and simple uh, RC devices. They do not have any uh, optimizing or monitoring options. Um, so they're, they're literally acting as a disconnecting device. Uh, I do want to mention that the TS2F connects to two modules and of one, so you only need one of these devices per two module. So the cost per watt is better uh, compared to the four OS. And uh, RSD and APS unit uh, connects only to one inverter, but it does also have a very competitive price on, uh, on a cost per watt basis. Um, the difference between Tygo and APS uh, is that APS actually have a much smaller and compact uh, receiver unit. So they designed this receiver unit uh, very compact and small, and it is small enough actually to hide underneath the uh, frame of the module. Uh, I call it the lips. So you can actually tug it into the lips, and then you will not be able to see it um, from outside, so it's very convenient. Um, so, like I said, Tygo is a very dominating player, but APS have uh, some pretty cool features that they offer. Um, now, the third option, MEP, which is a very interesting topic, uh, a very interesting product also, it's, uh, it's got a four-in-one unit, so basically one device will serve four modules, uh, which give it a advantage on the cost per watt basis. Uh, in addition to that, the uh, NEP PVG4 also have a monitoring function. So the interesting part about uh, the Tiger and APS uh, rapid shutdown device is that it's a one-way communication. So uh, the inverter sends signal to uh, the receivers continuously, and when it stops sending signals, the disconnect opens up and disconnects the PV power. From the from the uh, inverter, right? So, but the inverter, the, the, the receiver on the module side, uh, does not send signal to the inverter. So you actually don't know if something uh, that has malfunction or opened up by mistake, uh, um, by by malfunction, right? So, so uh, there's no way the inverter will be able to tell if each one is actually operating normally. Um, so uh, NEP, on the other hand, has implement a monitoring uh, function, so you do know if they're operating correctly or not. And also, it embedded a, a pretty cool uh, fire alarm uh, system. So basically, if, uh, if the temperature goes abnormal, uh, any device will actually uh, notify the inverter and also shut itself down. So it's got a fireproof feature that's uh, really avoided by some of our customers. So, like I said, each one of these solutions um, has its own uh, pros and cons, um, and, you know, by design choices. So uh, we offer all these to our customers uh, because everyone has their own preferences. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's what we aim to kind of try to cater to all the customers in the uh, in the CNI sector. Um, so. We actually went through a lot of work to prove the concept of all three uh, record shutting devices. On the engineering side, CPS has worked with each provider and to short uh, proper functionality and not just uh, satisfying the uh, current UO PDISS requirement because that task actually just three hours and doesn't really um, 
prove the uh, uh, the compatibility of inverter and uh, the receiver devices, especially uh, when AFCI is turned on. Um, so, uh, for the audience, uh, there there is a famous. Um, it, it, it's, it's really it's really often that the uh, AFCI function would uh, interfere with the uh, um, RSV function. So, so nuisance stripping has been a big big problem uh, as soon as the RSV device uh, came out. So, so what CPS does is it it does a uh, two month long testing for each of the uh, RSV. All, all kinds of uh, irradiance and temperature up and down does not affect the performance of uh, rocket shutdown by AFCI. So they, these two functions do not interfere and it will not cause any nuisance stripping. So that's essentially what we did with all the product I mentioned above. Um, and we also, we qualify only the simplest parts and that's RSV only, well, AP, NEP has a little bit more but I just want to make it clear that we do not, CPS do not uh, um, give our blessing to any other devices that these uh, 3D manufacturer makes, uh, the optimizers or the, the so that we only approve the simple RSD devices. Um, like I said, we check all the risks, uh, noise impacting ACI functions. Um, we also perform uh, extensive amount of testing, like I said before. Uh, we read, before we go through CPU certification, we go through our own lab uh, testing, so that includes temperature cycling, humidity, and, and so we, we test them for a good two weeks from all the scenarios, and then we move the device out to the, to the field, uh, to the rooftop, basically, and then have them experience the actual environment, um, and for two months. Uh, so that's our requirement. So we have to ensure two months of smooth operation. Uh, and if we found something wrong, we go back to the manufacturer and we ask them to modify based on our requirements. Um, so that's everything is in addition to uh, the UO certification we do. Um, so uh, we're really comfortable with uh, the device that we proved, that the above three. And then we provide all the field services. Um, we can provide all the field services also to those devices. Um, so the tech, so the, uh, although the warranty is still provided by the company that makes the receivers and the uh, transmitters, but the uh, uh, customer support of CPS will be the first front, uh, first front line. So if you have ever experienced a problem with uh, the RSD devices, uh, give us a call and we can take care of the rest with the uh, uh, third party company. Uh, that produces the RFD devices. So that's uh, that's what we're going to say about our rapid shutdown solutions. Um, yeah. So so I want to I mentioned the word lags before. Um, so we are one of the biggest feedback for inverter mounting is that uh, the current mounting solutions are very expensive and very inflexible. And, uh, uh, and also it takes a lot of time to install them. So we took that feedback and then really go back home and created an in-house wrapping solution. So we call them the uh, inverter with legs because they really look like legs. And these are very, very simple wrapping devices. Um, and it does provide a team grid tilt. Um, and in most scenarios, this picture doesn't show you also need a cover for sun shades uh, for most of our inverters. Uh, but it does, uh, this simple elegant solution does cut at least 50% of the cost for racking. Uh, and that's just material. Uh, we, we don't know how much it will save on installation for labor. Uh, so we will build on that feedback, but we think it's going to bring up the customer a lot of value as far as uh, CapEx is concerned. And these racks, uh, we have two platforms, but these racks will work on all the models, including our legacy product 23, all the way to our 60 kilowatt inverter. So we work with all inverters. Um, so uh, I also want to mention that um, CPS currently is one of the few manufacturers who offers separable wire box design. So uh, the wire boxes, which is where all the cable terminations and connections are made, 
are in a completely separate compartment uh, than all the other major power electronic components, IGBTs and capacitors, inductors, all those uh, are in a whole other compartment. So what we're doing is essentially we enable the customer, if the inverter needs to be replaced, we, uh, we will replace only the power head, which is where all the power electronics is, and without touching the uh, wire boxes, right? So, so essentially, you don't have to disconnect all the wiring, AC and DC. Uh, all you have to do is slide out the power head and slide in the new power head. Uh, we'll, we'll have a very graphic picture in the later slides. And also, uh, one additional OMM uh, uh, feature we're bringing is our new 25 kilowatt inverter in that the weight is so, so light, it's basically the power head of the 25 kilowatt is just a little bit above 40 pounds that we, we aim to enable the customer to carry these devices without having a scissor lift. So another one of the biggest feedback we got is every time you need to swap out those inverters, you need to run the scissor lift, and uh, that costs a lot of money, right? So we want to enable our customers to avoid having a scissor lift. Um, so that's, uh, you can actually carry this uh, power head with one hand at 40 pounds. And in this slide, uh, you know, we had a motion, but uh, 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 so this is our concept for for um, the swapping the uh, power heads. So um, the connector that you're seeing at the top of our bar box is a blind mode connector, and uh, the inverter can slide in and out uh, without having to touch the AC and DC wiring uh, connections. And uh, you know every detail matters. So so CPS when we design our inverters, we really kind of consider all of our feedbacks, right? So like I said before, blind mate connectors, five minute inverter swap, and no wire touch for for terminations and connections um, for OEM purposes. And all the fees holders are touch safe. Um, we also make sure there are enough space for all the installers to work around the wiring. So we leave plenty of spaces uh, for wiring, especially with our 2017 NEC compliant uh, uh, wire boxes, there's uh, really a lot of uh, space available after we eliminate half of the fuses. And uh, we also understand that in the CNI scenario, there are many, many side constraints, so we make sure we leave all surface available for wire conduit entry, uh, so there we leave a lot of options for, for side entry and bottom entry. Uh, we can accommodate both aluminum and copper cables, and uh, uh, all communication, including uh, RST, is built in. Um, for current, because the, uh, the PV industry has higher and higher penetration, now we have more and more stringent requirement around the uh, um, reactive power support. So uh, CPS is actually one of the few companies that you know reserve the KVA headroom. So basically, we can create, we, we can um, uh, basically provide uh, bars when we're actually producing the peak amount of real power. So our 50 kilowatt is actually 55 kVA, and 60 kilowatt is 66 kVA. So um, yeah, so this enables us to produce reactive power while we're at peak uh, power production. Um, so we're one, like I said, we're one of the few manufacturers that actually does that. Um, of course. Um, you know, everyone's aware of uh, the, the ISO in Turkey is kind of, uh, like I mentioned before, updating their interconnecting requirement to make sure uh, uh, all these advanced functions are implemented. For example, bar controls, um, you know, bulb bar operations, and a lot of this advanced operational mode now is required by the utility. So CPS is able to meet uh, all the requirements because we included uh, all these events functions from the get-go, right? So including Room 21 and with the new uh, ISO New England uh, uh, requirement. So, so we are able to meet all the, uh, all the uh, uh, requirements from the utility company. Uh, with that, I want to pass uh, the floor to Anton, who will uh, go over the uh, uh, Flex Gateway 
functions and services. Yeah, thanks, Peter. So uh, another product that CPS offers as, as part of our complete CNI solution is the Flex Gateway, which is a data communications and, and control solution for CPS inverters. Uh, the Flex Gateway can be installed in either one of the inverters at a site or uh, DIN rail mounted in an external enclosure. One Flex Gateway can be used for up to 32 CPS inverters, and the Flex Gateway enables fast and efficient field service by allowing inverter firmware upgrades, inverter settings adjustments, troubleshooting and performance diagnostics to all be done remotely so that the system operator or O&M provider doesn't need to roll a truck to the site every time a possible performance issue with the system occurs. So this solution provides a lot of value and savings for our customers, especially for sites that might be a long drive away since issues can be quickly looked at and resolved remotely. CPS also offers the Flex OM Performance Package, which in addition to the Flex Gateway card includes access to the customer facing web portal that allows owners to view the inverter data. And the data provided by this portal is not just kilowatt and kilowatt hour readings. Customers are able to view all kinds of things like DC and AC voltage and current readings, temperature readings, as well as harmonics data, which all could be useful when evaluating system performance and diagnosing possible issues. The, uh, the portal includes charting tools, customizable alerts, inverter fault codes, as well as showing views of a portfolio of sites that an owner or installer may be managing. Site managers will have the capability of remotely resetting inverters or clearing arc faults, as well as adjusting the power factor and, and active power settings on the inverters. The Flex OM performance package comes with a zero to 90 day inverter uptime guarantee and I mean, this offer shows the, the confidence that CPS has in our inverter performance and service capabilities that are enabled by our Flex Gateway service solution. We will also be releasing a 4G cellular option for our Flex OM packages, and this will be available to ship in July of this year. And for some CNI sites, revenue grade metering may be required at the site for a solar renewable energy credit program or maybe a requirement by the system owner or end user. And CPS offers a low cost solution that includes the CPS Flex Gateway and revenue grade metering equipment, as well as five years of the portal access and performance package. And this, this product ships in an outdoor enclosure with all of the components integrated into it, other than the, the CTs. But the CTs are included in, uh, in the package, just not inside the enclosure. So in addition to the many product solutions, we at CPS America pride ourselves on being focused on providing service for our customers from pre-sales and engineering support to logistics, order fulfillment, and service through the life of our products. CPS America has an R&D and service operations facility located in Richardson, Texas, that is our technical support hub and repair and analytics lab. We have a logistics and distribution center based in the Los Angeles area a sales and marketing office and showroom here in the San Francisco Bay Area, as well as team members located 
uh, across the country. And we have a strong service team that makes sure that we're there to support our customers during system installation and operation. We, we know the importance of being able to call and get someone on the phone when you have questions or need support for your projects. We have a, a team that answers hotline calls as well as service engineers that can provide remote inverter diagnostics and troubleshooting support through the capabilities enabled by the FlexOM platform. CPS also has a high-speed service logistics operation and can ship RMA replacement units within 24 hours. And to ensure optimized designs of our products, our team works closely with EPCs, developers, engineers, and system operators on their CNI projects. We, we're always trying to find ways to improve and develop new solutions to best support our customers based on the feedback and market insights that we get. The R&D and, and engineering team continuously makes products improvements to stay on the leading edge and, and support the changes and advancements in the industry. And we also put a lot of focus and, and resources into making sure the products that we offer are reliable for our customers through aggressive testing early in our design and, and development processes. And CPS has shown proven success with our solutions and is, has achieved a, a market leading number one share in CNI for three phase string inverters based on published market research. CPS has shipped over three and a half gigawatts of UL listed inverters in the US. CPS America is is a division, uh, is a global, um, is part of the, the Chint Group, which is a global publicly traded company with over $9 billion in annual revenue and has been in operation for over 30 years. And as mentioned, CPS aims to, to have market leading service provided by our technicians and applications engineers, as well as our regional sales managers here in the US. And CPS has been able to reach and keep the number one share in the CNI market through valuable partnerships with companies like Trina Solar. As we described uh, during this webinar, CPS is able to provide complete solutions for the CNI market for from inverters to accessories as well as limited availability of modules. Uh, but our partner Trina Solar offers optimized uh, combinations of CPS inverters with their PV solutions, which include both monofacial and bifacial PV modules. So if you have a project with Trina Solar modules, please reach out to their team and ask about the bundles and offers that they have with CPS inverters. Another partnership we have had is with Yaskawa Selectria, our longtime partnership with Yaskawa Selectria has, has been key in being able to support the CNI market in the U.S. Yaskawa Selectria has a great network of distribution channels and can supply a thousand volt inverter solutions. So if, if you're interested in our CNI solutions and if working with distribution partners works best for your, your business, please reach out to the Yes, go select your team and they'll be able to support you with your projects. And yeah, so that is the end of our slides. So if you do have any upcoming projects you're working out or you're working on, please feel free to reach out to our team and we'll be happy to help provide solutions to best support your your different applications. Um, and both of, both Peter and my contact information is below here. So I think we have some time to open it up to, to questions that uh, anybody may, may have here. Yeah, yeah, so it's time for the Q&A portion of the webinar. Um, remember, you can submit questions at any time in the Q&A widget at the bottom of your screen. 
So our first question is, um, are the 14 kilowatt unit, units still available? Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, uh, the answer is no, uh, the end of life of 14 kilowatt units. So it's generally not available, but if you have a unit existing installation, uh, we can still RMA you uh, 14 kilowatts. So they're just used for uh, uh, RMA purposes. We are not currently selling 14 kilowatts anymore. Okay. And I don't exactly know the lingo, so I'll just <laughs> read it as it's written, and, and you guys can help me. Um, is the 208 volt model 3W not required N? Yeah. So uh, yeah, go ahead. Do you want to take that one? Uh, sure. Yeah, I, I can take that one. Um, yeah. So I believe the the question is related to um, whether the 208 volt inverter will be. Uh, designed for three wire or four wire uh, systems, um, and so the the 208 volt 25 uh, kW model will be similar to our currently available uh, thousand volt inverters. So the 36, uh, 50, 60 kW and 25 kW inverters that um, are designed to be installed as either three wire or four wire systems. So the termination or connection of the neutral conductor for the utility interconnect is optional. Okay, perfect. This next question, do you have the NEP PVG4 in stock right now? Uh, I'll take that one. Yeah, so we currently do have the NEP V4 in stock right now. Um, we have about uh, 120 units that's available that will serve up to, because the one in four unit will serve up to 480 modules. So they are available in stock. Okay. Can the 1,000 volt inverters be used on ground mounts? Uh, yeah. Yes, they can be used. Sorry. Go ahead, Peter. <laughs> yes, they can, they can be used for ground mounts. We, we, uh, it is uh, good for both rooftop and ground mount uh, scenarios, as well as carport applications. Okay. Uh, what type of grounding is required for your inverters? Anton, would you like to go pick up? Um, Sure. Yeah. Um, so, I guess the so the to answer the question. The the inverters are um, transformless invert string inverters um, designed for ungrounded uh, PV arrays. Um, but um, yeah, I guess like all string inverters or most string inverters in the market, um, you know, it will require the um, uh, electrical grounding conductor, um, but I guess the the inverters are are designed for for ungrounded PV arrays. If if that is what the question is related to. Okay, can flex gateways be integrated into already installed CPS inverters? Uh, yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Go ahead, Anton. Yeah, I was just going to say um, they they can, um, but I did want to just mention that um, you know they they can be used on um, the currently available models, uh, so 50, 60, 25, uh, 36. Um, but they for the older legacy models. Um, uh, it, it wouldn't be compatible with those, but if if they are currently installed inverters that that are uh, the currently available models, then um, yes, the the flex gateway could be installed with those. Okay. Um, there are a lot of questions, so thank you everyone for submitting them. Just trying to find the the best one to ask. Um, can 
can weather stations be connected to the flex gateway and, and displayed on the, the CPS portal? Yeah, so the flex gateway um, allows up to 32 devices to be connected um, to each flex gateway. So that could be 32 inverters, um, or if you did want to connect weather station devices that um, allow communication through through Modbus protocol, um, those can be connected to the Flex Gateway as well. Okay. Are there are are any other 480 volt inverters going to be three wire? other than the 36 kilowatt inverter. Are any inverters going to be three wire? Um, so I guess the 36 kilowatt inverter, uh, as well as the 50, 60 and 25 kilowatt inverters um, are designed to, I guess, be installed as either three wire or four wire systems. So I guess all of those inverter models can be used in, in three wire systems and and the installation of the neutral conductor is optional. Okay, we will take just a mm -hmm. few more questions. Um, so do all the, the 25, 36, 50, and 60 inverters, do they all have a 10 year warranty? Yes, I believe so. Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they all have a standard 10-year warranty. Yep, they do. Okay. Um, do you have a mounting option for ground mounts? Um, right um, now, we don't support uh, the racking for ground mount. So um, uh, we do have a, uh, the brackets to mount, but we don't we don't have a stand, if you will. Yeah. Right. I'll, I, I'll just add that, you know, with ground mount systems, typically what installers will do is, is mount them onto the um, ground mount piles or, or have Unistrip right there with, with the ground mount arrays. Um, so unlike uh, a rooftop system where you would want to have a 15-degree tilt on the inverter. Um, typically, since they're installed vertically for ground mounts, um, you wouldn't really need to, to have a, a tilt mount rack like you would um, for rooftop systems. Okay, and I think actually that is going to be all the time that we have for questions. I, I know that there were some questions asked that um, we're not answered, but um, please feel free to reach out to our presenters on your own. And again, this webinar will be shared with all registrants, so you can view it again at your convenience. So I would like to thank Peter and Anton for being here and CPS for sponsoring today's webinar. Thanks to everyone in the audience for participating. Hope you enjoyed our presentation and we invite you to join us for more Solar Power World webinars in the future. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you.